This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, wonderful denizens of the internet. Yes, uh, who... Interestingly, interestingly enough, this is the 101st episode, which Kat couldn't be here for, unfortunately, so she kind of missed out on a lot of the stuff, but... I was in the middle of moving. Which is um, fine. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Yeah, but, you know, life happens to everybody. I mean, and like I explained on that one, there was a bit of a hiatus with the show proper because I had been moving, so... So, yeah, it, it is very understandable. Oh, so besides all of the moving and all of that stuff, how have you been? Um, really good. Uh, minus the stress of moving, like, my my work is sort of, like, eased back a little bit, so uh, it's been a little more relaxed to, to kind of compensate for the stress of moving. Sweet. Now, that that is a place I would rather work for. I realize, okay, you have life shit going on, we're going to ease up. Well, it was just sort of like a cosmic thing. <laughs> It, it wasn't really like work is like, oh, no, you're stressed out? No, let's let's cut back. No, it was like, thank God, stress sort of, uh, uh, you know, it just sort of balanced it out. Because we've just had, like, at my work, we've just had, like, weeks and weeks and weeks, like, months in a row of, like, I, I'm a part-timer, so I should only really be working, like, 32 hours. But I've been working, like, almost 40 hours a week for quite a while. And then all of a sudden, right as all my life stuff is happening, they're like it's sort of like here here's a nice like 20 hour week <laughs> wow so that's that's not bad gives you time to take care of everything mhm yeah yeah i'd i'd be happy for 20 hour weeks myself but uh but that wouldn't tell me having you know a job <laughs> <laughs> but i'm i'm trying to work it one way or the other um one thing that has happened since the last show was the new blip bop blip apocalypse has happened I'm sure you've heard about it. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, whereas, like, they just wholesale took a whole bunch of people and said, you know what, fuck you. And everybody, I mean, like, like the three main sites I tend to follow, uh, you know, follow or a part of, rather, have been affected. You know, people on my side have been affected, people on Nerdvice have been affected, and even people on That Guy With The Glasses have been affected. Because I think among them was uh, Leon Thomas of Renegade Cut. Uh, I want to say... Um, I want to say Lotus Prince was among them. Uh, the Omega is even among them. And it's like, really? Uh, although, <laughs> uh, some it's just some people. Although Blip, since they were bought out by Maker, who was also bought out by Disney, I seem to remember Maker having this thing against podcasts. And, and let's play some I, I mean, stuff. the great podcast purge already happened. Yeah. but But Omega's channel also was hosting Lesbian Talk for a while. So, so yeah. So uh, the, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I think they're still looking at their options. They'll at least be able to get the MP3s, which you can also, you know, you'll be able to find that show in all the usual places. So, which includes my site. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so all that's happening, and everybody's looking at their options and thinking of all of these different ways to, you know, like kind of help earn a little bit of money through what they love and looking at YouTube partner programs, which even I've been looking into recently because it's like, you know what? I can do better on YouTube. I really can, especially with some of the projects I do have in mind. Like I've got a new uh, Pokemon playthrough I'm looking at that's not just your average Pokemon playthrough. I've, I've done a little bit of other work with it. And I've already done two episodes of it as of this recording. If you can tell my voice is a little strained, that's why. <laughs> and the second one has a big holy shit moment. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but those won't be coming out till like the end of June, early July, or whatever. So those, you might, might, one might even come out on your birthday, Kat. Woo! That would I'll be, be awesome. at a convention, by the way. <laughs> ah, yes. Birthday con. <laughs> party con! Oh, that one's already party con anyway. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so excited. Oh, yeah. Which con is that going to be, by the way? Uh, it's Tokyo and Tulsa, and it's July 11th, which is my birthday through the 13th. Nice. So, I'm pretty stoked. Like, Friday night, green room, party time. Sweet. 
And uh, then I'll be like, oh, I'm that much closer to 30. No, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm already over 30. It it, 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 it doesn't get much better. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I drink every few weeks. <laughs> and that's the funny thing about my drinking habits, like alcoholic drinking habits. I don't. I, I don't sit there and get drunk every night. I don't drink every night. But when I do drink, it is for the express purpose of getting drunk. I mean, so I mean, I guess I guess I'm asking for some kind of credit because you know at least I know what I want when I'm going into it. I don't drink just to, you know whatever. Now, the only drink I will drink just to drink it and not worry about getting drunk or whatever is lambic, because that shit doesn't get me drunk. It's it is gloriously. You know, just, just the nectar of the gods, but it doesn't get me drunk. Oh, so yeah. But speaking of YouTube and 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 gameplay videos and everything, I have a couple of shoutouts for this week. Um, which funny story? Before I get into the shoutouts, funny story. We had tried to do a show last week. Uh, Holly and I did. And we actually, you know, we set the recording up. We had a little bit of hiccup at the beginning, and, and the thing was saying, okay, you're still recording. And so we took it at face value. We go through the entire show. I go back to check because, okay, it, it says it was recording. It probably split the, split the file in two. No, it only recorded the first five minutes. Nice. I love yeah. when that happens. That's my favorite thing. Oh, yeah, totally. And we, we, we had wanted to reschedule and do the show, but... Since Holly has been also doing her freelance work, it's it's been a little bit hectic on the time, so we couldn't do it. So some of the news stories that we were we we had read last week, you're going to be hearing this week. So there might be a little bit of stories that will be like, wait a minute, I heard this somewhere else. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and these shoutouts are also from that show that never officially got recorded because Skype and Callgraph decided they didn't want to play nice. So. Um, so yeah, my first one for this week is a user by the name of Darzeth, uh, the YouTube channel is X Darzeth X. He is a Let's Player. Found him, actually found him and the other guy both on Reddit, of all places. Which it's all right. I found a few other, I found a few other things on uh, Reddit that that I like to watch. You know, like the D Pad crew. I like watching those guys play. And so far, I'm enjoying uh, these guys, Darzeth. The ones that kind of got me into his stuff, there is a video of his where he does a, a play of a game called Super Hot, which it's basically time stands still when you do. You know, you you stop time by just standing still, and you use that to take out the enemies and get out of whatever room you happen to be in. It looks is like it's like just JoJo's Bizarre Adventure kind of thing. Da waddle da, and then you stop time. Something like that, but I think what he's got is. I think the beta demo or whatever, it's, I don't think it's the full game yet, but if the full game is anything like the demo he was playing, holy shit, shut up and take my money because that looks a lot of – looks like a lot of fun. And the other guy that I found through Reddit, uh, another Let's Player, is by the name of Cinebright, C-I-N-N-A-B-R-I-T-E, and his video that, that really got my attention was the Goat Simulator video. Because I don't know why, but Goat Simulator looks like it would be a hell of a lot of fun to play. Because you Goat could... Simulator? Yes! Uh, Goat Simulator. Have you heard of it? I have heard of it. I have seen screen caps. I will not play this thing. <laughs> but you play as a goat and go out and wreck shop on everybody. I, I found a cat simulator once, and all you do is you jump up onto like furniture and you knock things over. Well... Well, Go Simulator, you do a lot more than that. You can blow up, you can blow up fucking gas stations. I don't know why I would. I'm not a domestic terrorist. <laughs> I'm not either, but you know what? In a, <laughs> in a video game, I'll do it. I think I think it ha helps to know that real people are not being hurt. But I guess I mean if if you do want to go blow stuff up, it's better to do it in a video game than it is to do it in real life. Yes, that's why we have Gary's mod. <laughs> <laughs> Because you set that up, set up a whole bunch of zombies to continually come at you, and just keep blowing them up. <laughs> or even set them against another group of zombies, lets you and him fight. Boom, there you go. Oh, but but the user Cinebrite, Cinebrite, C-I-N-N-A-B-R-I-T-E, and Darzeth X, Darzeth, D-A-R-Z-E-T-H, with another X. Um, both of them, those usernames at YouTube, check them out, you might like them. 
so I'm I'm gonna venture a wild guess and say you probably don't have any shout outs, do you? Um, you know, I, I was sitting there thinking of like, can I scramble and come up with something? And I did manage to think of, it's, it's not, uh, any kind of reviewer or anything, which mine, mine never seemed to be, but there is a really, really entertaining group on uh, YouTube called Team Star Kid. And this is the group that does, uh, that made a very Potter musical. Oh, and which is hilarious. If you've never seen it and you like Harry Potter, you need to watch it because it's brilliant. Um, and my roommate has just recently gotten me into one of their new musicals called Twisted, the untold story of a royal vizier, which is like a wicked, you know, wicked, like the play, the musical, the book, uh, spin on Jafar, where oh. Jafar is is the hero. And it's a really, really funny. The whole thing starts with a parody of Belle from uh, from Beauty and the Beast, like the opening song. And it's just Jafar walking around Agrabah, people going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> it's really, really, really funny. And it is like a full-length musical, so it's like over two hours long. And it's actually a really, really good story, a really interesting take on Jafar, but also incredibly funny and not safe for work either. Uh, but if you have a couple hours to kill, definitely check it out. It's all really fantastic. Sweet. And there's actually one. It's actually one from a last week's failed recording that Holly really wanted to get out there. And after she mentioned it, I really wanted to get out there too. Have you heard of? The, have you heard about the Kickstarter guys that were like doing the? Uh, I, I want to say solar panel. Uh, paved roads or whatever yeah yeah i've been seeing that all over facebook that's like a big deal yes and if, when i checked i think they either haven't they either like met their goal or or are close to it or something like that yeah because it's like you know i would love to see those coded all over the damn country and as somebody who has been a professional driver holy shit this would be amazing night driving would be so so much safer winter driving would be so much safer Oh my God! It, it would it would be it would just be awesome. Just just no other way to put it. It would be awesome. But uh, I but I, I figured I would be remiss if I didn't mention that on the show because I know Holly mentioned it when we tried to do the show last week and she was really excited about it. I was really excited about it. I think everybody's really excited about it. And so it's still like holy shit. So <laughs> so there we go. Oh, so that uh, that that those be our shout outs for this week and. Oh, now we have our news. A little bit dun, of dun, dun. little bit of stuff we were supposed to have last week, some new stuff this week. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. This one first one comes out of Round Rock, Texas. You know it's gonna be good because it's Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, including the stupidity. Yes. Oh, a Texas man accused of making and selling marijuana brownies is facing up to life in prison if convicted. That's because officials in Round Rock have charged him with a first-degree felony. It's a move that the man's family and attorney outraged. I think, it's, I think they mean to say that left them outraged, but we'll go with that. It's outrageous. It's crazy. I don't understand it, Joe Lavaro, the man's father, said. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of curious about it, too. I don't understand it either. Uh, and according to the article, the charge is so severe because the recipe includes hash oil, which allows the state to use the sugar, cocoa, butter, and other ingredients to determine the weight of the drugs. Is it me, or does it seem like a case of shifting the goalpost just to get a bust? I'm I'm confused. Okay. What, what hash oil? I'm I don't understand. Hash oil. I believe it's basically a liquid pot, to to put it simply, if I'm remembering correctly. And he, apparently he had used this to make some you know pot brownies, which hey you know that's fine. I don't think it should be legalized. I think it should be legalized, but that's a whole different matter. But the cops apparently somehow found out about this. And they're throwing not just the book at him, but the book and the kitchen sink and everything else at him because he used hash oil, and they're and they're saying, oh, you used oil in this. Okay, so we'll just charge you for the weight of the entire batch of brownies. 
And so it's like it's like okay, you know, hash oil. I, I don't know how good it is for you. I don't know if it's anything any better or worse than just smoking the pot plant directly, or even eating the pot plant directly. But if it's the, got the same kind of uh, effect that just smoking or eating a regular pot brownie would have, then why my, why make it a felony? It shouldn't be a felony. It, uh, okay, pot should be legal in all its forms, but that's a whole different story. It, it just seems to me like they're they're just looking for a bus. They want the biggest bus possible, and they're just yeah. I mean, maybe if he had, like, intended to sell it to school children or something, that might be, like, a big deal. But this is just dude using some interesting ingredients to make a delicious dessert. Yeah, and and a dessert that not only is delicious, but also leaves you wanting more. (laughs) You know, that makes me wonder, does McDonald's put uh, any kind of, of marijuana product in their food? If they if they do, I bet it's their French fries because, as disgusting as McDonald's is, goddamn, they have delicious fries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to wonder about some of these restaurants. Hmm. Oh, and of course they're gonna they're gonna fight and 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 we'll we don't know you know how it's gonna turn out. So far, as as it stands, they're just getting ready to go to legal battles and everything. And I will say this though, if you know, with it being illegal. If he should get in trouble for it legally, I hate to say it, but yeah, because it is technically illegal, but not fucking life in prison. That's ridiculous. I mean, it it says that he could get five years to life, and even five years is ridiculous. Like, that's fucking stupid. Like, this guy is not hurting anybody. He's not even hurting himself. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it just, it just, ah, I mean, this is the same country where this can happen, but, but, you know, you have, you've got people with, with, you know, you know, oh, what is it? What is it? That, that one organization. Oh yeah, what is it? The NFL that will happily take on, you know, rapists and 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 other other more horrible people just because they can throw a football around really well. I can't remember but, who said that. But if you make pot brownies to eat yourself in the privacy of your own home, ooh, buddy, you've done wrong. Yeah. But but you can be famous and kill someone and rape people and have dogs kill each other as long as you're good at sports. Yeah. That, that's that's the big takeaway from that. It's like, uh-huh. Yeah. Welcome we, to America. Yes. Jesus. Oh, doesn't get much better. Boontown, New Jersey. Boontown. Welcome to Boontown. A woman in Boontown, New Jersey is suing her neighbors over their son's drumming. This seems like a very familiar story. I I feel like I've, I've read something similar to this before. Danny Palazzo's neighbor claims he's ruining her quality of life by playing the drums at all hours. An appellate court is letting her lawsuit move forward, but Palazzo's parents claim he never played late into the night. He would only come up here 10, 15 minutes at a time. It would be something to do after school if he was bored, said Palazzo's dad. We would go and look to see if her car was in the driveway so that he could play. She wasn't home. The Palazzo family filed a harassment complaint against the neighbor. The judge, however, dismissed the complaint. Because, yeah, well, you're just, you're just trying to make her look like the bad guy. Well, she's trying to make us look like a bad guy. Well, no, she has a complaint. She's she's concerned the drumming is lowering her quality of life. It's ruining it. I was like, where the fuck is Boontown, New Jersey? Is it supposed to be some sort of upper white crust, white bread, waspy neighborhood or something? I I, I have honestly have no probably idea. Probably not in New Jersey, no. Oh, uh, probably not. <laughs> oh lordy, but goddamn. Okay. If you're drumming and you're drumming so loud, and, and you did, it doesn't say anywhere in here that the neighbor has asked them whether or not that you know, what you know, to uh, tell the kid to stop his drumming at whatever time. And the parents, and you know, the parents and the kid seem to take the time to say, okay, you know what, we know she has a problem with it, so we'll do it when she's not here. That sort of thing. It seems like the parents are taking all sorts of measures to 
you know, to, to make her life a little easier on her, you know. She doesn't like it, so we're going to be considerate. They, I don't think they should have to, but you know, they're they're make they're being considerate. And this woman is still claiming, oh, "I'm ruining my quality of life because of drumming." Drumming does not ruin quality of life. Okay, you know what ruins quality of life? People running around and shooting up each other in the street. That ruins quality of life. Ah, oh, your thoughts? I just think that. This country is really fucked up, and this is part of the reason why. It's like, people have problems with one another, and here's somebody, like, here's two people who are clearly incapable of actually talking to each other, sitting down like mature adults, and and having a discussion. And, and it's, it could be one way or the other, and one of them's unwilling to actually sit down and talk with the other, whatever. This is proving that, like... People can't work out their issues anymore, and it's really disturbing when it's easier to go to court to to prove that you're better than the other person, that you're more in the right than them, than it is to actually sit down and try and work out a deal with your fucking neighbors. This is ridiculous. This is the kind of shit that shouldn't happen. It's, oh, my neighbor plays a noisy instrument. I'll get over it. Or my, my neighbor doesn't like that I play a noisy instrument. They'll get over it. Like, Seriously, like if they can't come to some kind of compromise, one of them should fucking move. Exactly. And and it's just really, you know, and what if this guy is practicing for maybe band practice, whether it's marching band or maybe he's in a garage band. You should, you know, people need to practice that shit. Ugh. And yeah, I think I'm remembering a similar thing uh, from before. It was definitely a different story because I think it was. I don't think it was drums particularly, but they were saying that the kid was, you know, ruining quality of life or whatever. But I think I want to say it was in the UK that it happened. But now we got one here in the in the states. Oh, I mean, if this was in like an apartment building or something, but this is a separate house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if you can't find somewhere in your house to escape noise levels of outside, then you have more problems than just your neighbors play an instrument. You don't have very good quality work in your house, and you should probably consider moving to some place with more soundproofing. Yeah. Well, although I will say, if this woman has the money to go and get an attorney, then she may have money to maybe, oh, I don't know, soundproof her house a little bit. Fix up the house, or maybe even offer to soundproof their house, and there you go, problem fucking solved. You know, that then that would be a nice gesture. Say here, you know what, this is bothering me, it might be bothering other people. Let me soundproof your room. Let me pay for it. Yeah, like it just people are just so quick to in in this country very very specifically, just so quick to jump to lawsuits to to try and make a buck. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a time and a place for lawsuits. This is not it. Oh, so our next story. Hello, Florida. Oh, God. Take a drink. Yes. Take your shot. Winter Park, Florida. A local high school released a yearbook that included so many errors that school leaders might reissue a digital version. Orange County public school officials – oh, God, Orange County – said the yearbook at Winter Park High School contains spelling errors or typos on nearly every page. Oh, my God. Apparently, the publication didn't go through a copy editing process before it was sent to the publisher. No shit. The school's principal is now thinking about putting out a corrected version on DVD. And they have some of the errors that are found in the printed yearbook. <clears throat> Three stunts were, you know, as in where, W-H-E-R-E, done, and the crown was in awe. Where done what? crown. What? Yeah. I, I, I don't even understand that. I, I think I know what they're going for, but that, that's that Central Florida education for you. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to get a letter for that, I hope. Uh, once our coach gave us out pep talk, I was able to get in the water and warm up. First of all, you need a comma in there. Because cause, uh, once our coach gave us our pep talk, comma, by the way, my brain and, and mouth work fast enough to kind of correct the words that you misspelled. It is one coach, singular, not a past tense coach, and gave us 
hour, not out. Uh, but the rest of the sentence is just whatever. Uh, this is grammar Nazi the segment. <laughs> This, this is, like, legitimately embarrassing, not just for this school or this county, but for this country that by by high school age that people don't know the difference between there, there, and there, or, like, that they can't proofread their own work. Now, I, I have a hard time proofreading my own work because my brain sort of fills in if I'm missing a word like the or and. Sometimes I leave them out because my brain just inserts it in there when I read it. Yeah. And that's why when you have something published that you go through an editor of some sort or there's some sort of editing process. And the fact that we get to this level, like people in high school who still can't like construct sentences correctly. Yeah. Or and spell I, correctly. This is really depressing. Yeah. And I was – I think I was witnessing some of the beginnings of it when uh, one of my cousins well, was – I think she was either still in high school or just on the cusp of finishing high school, and she would and, and she would come into my uh, parents' insurance office. I'd be working there doing my thing, and she would start using all this horrible grammar. I, I would sit down and be like, no, 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 no. I would need to correct you because it just sounds really horrible. And then she looked at me and she said, "Well, I'm not in school. I don't give a cat. I don't give a fuck." And I'm like, "Really?" That's, you go to school to learn that to apply it to the real world. You don't learn that in school just to placate some teachers. Ugh. There's a point to a lot of the stuff they're trying to teach you. Ugh. In the attempts of snatching the ball from the opposing team, Elliot Hammond and Cameron Gurgley clash into one another. Do you... Do, uh, you, you... Okay... You don't clash into one another. And 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 by the way, they're missing an I and into. It's supposed to be crash, and it's attempts with a T at the end. Uh, at least they got the comma. For once. Yeah. yeah. Freshmen enjoy their first homecoming dance. On the plus side, they got the right form of there. On the downside, the plural of freshmen is freshmen. M E N. Just like man and men. There you go. Uh, the DJ, they, they DJ was sure to keep the dance floor filled with dancing students. They DJ? That looks so much more like just a typo. It's like, I, I think whoever was doing this was thinking they was sure. Okay, so who was sure? DJ. Okay. Oh, oh, they, they DJ. Okay, send it through. Again. That's why you have editors. Oh. Like, I just wonder what what sort of, um, like, every, every club and, and everything has some sort of, like, teacher who's in charge of it. Like, what teacher let them get away with this? Because you can only blame the students so far. Yeah. Because, and it's obviously not an English teacher. Hmm. <laughs> Or it could be hor- it could be even more horrible, and it is an English teacher. Well, see, I think in my school, your book fell under the English department. Um, but you know, like the, the teacher is there at least in forms of like your book club. Actually, I don't know if people have your book club because in my high school, your book was a class you could take. Oh wow! Um, as, as was the school newspaper. It was like a full on class that you took, and you just worked on your book all year. Or you worked on newspaper every month or something. But uh, anyway, like there's a teacher who's supposed to be supervising all of this. And part of it is to make sure that it gets done correctly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's always got to be some sort of adult in charge who's making sure that it that it goes right. And clearly that teacher did not pay enough attention this year to make sure that it got done right. Yeah, you had one job, teacher, and you right. failed. Because it. It, it, it's very clear that it didn't go through an editing process mm-hmm. and that should have been something that the teacher, you know, like that should have been on a schedule somewhere where the teacher goes, okay, we have to be done by this date. So here's your deadline so that we can edit it on these dates and get it turned into the publisher by this date or that date or whatever. Yeah. Apparently, you know, winter park high school does not know how to do that. <laughs> Bro, do you even deadline? Yeah, I know. Do you even, and this one, this one just, 
the varsity cheerleaders clap their pom-poms as they parade down the streets of Park Avenue. First of all, wrong form of there. Second of all, have you seen the well-to-do up and down Park Avenue on that famous thoroughfare? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Every time I, I see Park Avenue and I'm thinking of putting on the Ritz. Ah. But yeah, that that I, I think we've had enough of that one. <laughs> oh. And speaking of schools, um, this one apparently is not in this country. Uh, I want to say either Canada or Australia. Hmm. Um, a Victorian mother is demanding answers after her teenage daughter's armpits were shaved by her teacher as part of the school's curriculum. What? Melissa Woods. Mother of 14-year-old Taylor, yep, T-A-Y-L-A-H, says her daughter was extremely upset when her armpits were shaved in front of two other girls in a classroom. I didn't understand why they had to do it, Miss Woods told radio station whatever on Thursday. The teenager, who has a disability, had been enrolled in a life skills program at Juan Grada District Specialist School in the state's northeast. Uh, so we're thinking Australia, because I, I don't think they're – is there a – no, if it was Canadian, it would be a province. This was probably Australia. The teacher told Miss Woods that her daughter would get picked on if she didn't shave, she said. I spoke to the teacher the very next day, and she told me that she has the right to do it. It's part of the curriculum. Really? What? What? Uh, no. It's just – no. And you know what? This, this goes into this whole body hair, body hair shaming thing. If you don't want to shave certain parts of your body, that's more power to you, whether you're male, female, or yes. Just, you know, you want to be all hairy and shit? Be all hairy and shit. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be automatically a dirty ball of hairy gunk. Because guess what? Hair can be cleaned. And as long as you keep it clean and everything, it's going to be fine. Would it look weird for a woman to have armpit hair long enough to braid? Sure. It's going to look weird because that's not what we're in general used to. In this country. Yeah, in this country. Or maybe even in Australia. But even though, even then, if girl doesn't want her armpits shaved, guess what? No means fucking no, teacher. That's a personal choice. Yeah. Like, and, and you don't know, there could be some sort of... Some sort of, you know, reason why, like not even a personal one. Like there could be like maybe an allergy to the types of metal used in the razor. Mm -hmm. Like think about that or, or allergies to certain kind of soaps. So, you know. Yeah. And it states clearly in the article, you know, the daughter clearly did not want to shave. And the teacher did it anyway. That's like you don't do that. And, of course, the school is like, well, we're very concerned. We regret the family and the child were upset, but in the future we'll seek specific permission and all that stuff. It's like, okay, you know, that, 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 that's fine, but you really need to do something about the teacher because the teacher stepped over a boundary. I don't care if it's supposed to be the social norm that women shave their armpits. It's up to the woman to decide. If she doesn't want to do it, then don't make her fucking do it. It's just – uh. And if you want to and, – and, you know, teaching shaving, because this is supposed to be, what, a life skills program? Okay, shaving? Maybe if you want to shave, if you want to have that information, knowing how to shave is a good thing. That way, if you want to do it, boom, there you go. But it should not be forced upon who anybody who may not want to shave, whether they have a disability or whether they're neurotypical. It's just – ugh. Ugh. It's just, God damn it. Ugh, fucking body hair shaming motherfucking pieces of... <sighs> and, and what really bothers me is that, like, they, they tried to, like, say, well, hey, you're going to get picked on if you don't do this. Like, mm -hmm. how are... I mean, unless I'm walking around with, like, uh, like sleeveless shirts all the time, how are people even going to know? How can you guarantee that somebody is going to be bullied for it. You're you're basically inspiring fear based out of your own personal views. Like that's ridiculous. That is. I mean there there are legitimate there are other more legitimate things to worry about being bullied over than your fucking armpits. This this is 
like school for people with disabilities, like mental and physical disabilities. I'm pretty sure these are people who are getting picked on already. Yeah, you don't need to add more to it. You, you don't need don't. to tell them that they need to be ashamed of some part of themselves that they are clearly okay with. Yeah, and this actually reminds me of another thing that has been popping up in the past couple of weeks. Uh, there was like – I don't remember. I think it was a school in Utah that that had you know, you know the yearbook pictures altered because they felt the women – or well, not well. The women, I say the women. The girls in the yearbook photos were wearing clothing that was showing a little too much skin. Yeah, I was just reading about that, and like the photo edited that you know, you know, for what it's worth, the photo edits weren't that bad. Like yeah, like it was actually in most of them, the photoshopping was pretty good. But like the major complaint was that it was so inconsistent, where like one girl would have sleeves photoshopped on her her sleeveless shirt or whatever, like her little tank top, but then a girl wearing the exact same shirt would not have the photo editing done. Yeah, that and that, of course, is a whole other aspect of this because it's like, okay, you know what? You either do it for everybody or you do it for nobody. I would rather you do it for nobody because why, 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 why try and make these girls ashamed of whatever they happen to wear for their class picture? You know, Based I mean, on your idea of what's appropriate and not appropriate. And I saw some of the unedited pictures. None of them were dressed inappropriately. There's their, their low cut shirts were not that low cut. Their sleeveless shirts were not offending anybody. Yeah. I mean, and there's, and I seem to remember a quote from, from one of the, I think it was either the principal or one of the, one of the higher ups at that particular school saying, well, they, you don't want them dressed like that in the real world or, or, or go to an interview dressed like that. Motherfucker, they're not going to go to an interview dressed like that. They're just sitting for a class picture. That's, that's, that's not even in the same ballpark. I'm pretty sure if you teach them how to dress for an interview, the best way to dress for an interview, they're probably going to follow it. Just saying. Huh. <sighs> So yeah, let's 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 bring it back. You know, we kind of brought it back with the with the yearbook thing, but now we go down to Nevada, <laughs> and we go a little bit into what uh, what one of my uh, trainers at my first trucking job called uh, a dumb trucker. A former cast member of Ice Road Truckers Deadliest Roads allegedly kidnapped a prostitute in Las Vegas. A police ro report said. Tim Zicker, who appeared as a driver in episodes of the History Channel show, History Channel show in 2011, rather, was arrested on kidnapping, extortion, and coercion charges by Las Vegas police on December 19th. The matter is just coming to light publicly this week. The arrest report describes a bizarre dispute between Zicker, 35, and Lisa Caddow, described as a prostitute who works under the name Snow White. Oh It'd my be... God! <laughs> how many how many childhoods are destroyed now? <laughs> Ow, but nah, I'm sure Snow they're, they're, Snow White is one of the more common ones I've seen in porn and, and that kind of stuff. So mm. It began after he allowed her to use his bank ATM card to withdraw cash to pay for sexual advances, the report said. Number one, if you're going to pay for a prostitute, go at, you know, you know, if she's worried about you running off with the cash or whatever and not paying, then she can accompany you to the ATM and you get it out yourself. It is your money. You should have the control over it. So, you know, just 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 saying there. He allegedly became upset later when he suspected she took more money than she was supposed to get out of the account the document showed. Do you have no way to check it? I I mean, you know, pretty much every bank that I've been with has a way to check your balance online. Even the small podunk little banks here in my hometown have online banking services. There's no excuse. I've, I've got my, my banking done. I've got a, an app on my phone that I can check my statements on and pay my bills through. Hey, yeah, so do I. So so it, it, there is no excuse for not being able to check it. Uh, da, da. Mm, yeah. Kado was then locked inside of a closet, tied up, and was instructed to give Tim someone's phone number who could bring him the money that she owed him, the police report said. Zicker did not realize the number was to a police cell phone given to her by an officer she knew as a citizen source. 
<laughs> wow. The officer wrote that when he answered the phone, Zicker allegedly told me that he currently had Snow White, and if I didn't bring $1,000 to a phone booth at Linwood Sahara, he was going to Mexico to kill Snow White. Because apparently $1,000 is that serious of a business. Dude, you you are a, a truck driver. I know from personal experience, on a good week, you can bring in a good $400, $500 for one week of driving. So $1,000, just a couple of weeks, and there you go. So yeah, it's not worth it for you. Plus, you are on a television show. That's going to add to your money. You don't need to kill over $1,000. Not to mention, you were on a television show. Don't pretend like people aren't going to know who you are. Somebody will recognize you eventually. Why would you put yourself out there like that? Yeah, because you fucking idiot. Uh, several other calls followed before the officer found Zicker and Cadeau behind a Las Vegas casino where he arrested Z Zicker. Zicker told the officer that his plan was to place Cadeau on Craigslist and attempt to make money off of her performing sexual acts, the report said. God. Yeah, because that's not coercion in any way. I wasn't going to let her go till she gave me what she owed me, the report, quote, the report quotes Zicker as saying. His lawyer, Roy Nelson, told CNN Tuesday that his client maintains his innocence to any criminal wrongdoing. Okay, this is where this is where you might want to, you know, go all all jumba on the paper here. It is our understanding that the alleged victim has major credibility issues and we are currently investigating the circumstances surrounding the events. I really? I don't care about you know the fact that you're going to slut shame somebody who has sex on purpose uh to people that she's not married to um cuz that's a fucking choice, dude. Uh, but, but you can't pretend like y your client is innocent. I mean, this guy is obviously just doing his job as a lawyer, but mm -hmm. there's no way this is going to work when you call the police to to tell them that you're going to extort somebody and commit crimes Yeah, and or threaten to commit crimes and then pretend like it never happened or pretend like you were somehow in the right. It's yeah. just not going to happen. Yeah, because guess what, motherfucker? In Nevada, prostitution is legal, and it is regulated, and they have police protection. It's not like you can go over to, say, New York and, and just you know, you know get a prostitute, do whatever with her when she doesn't have much in the way of legal recourse. Because if you go down, then she's going to go down with you because what, she's, what she was doing at the time was illegal. This, is, this, this whole story right here is a good example of why prostitution should be legal throughout the country, legal and regulated. This I was going to say, and regulated. Yes, legal and regulated, because things like this would, you know, other guys who try and pull this kind of shit that Tim Zucker do has done, they will get dealt with. They will have police support to keep them safe. They will be regulated to take regular tests. To, to stem the flow of STDs getting everywhere. And if you have an STD, then you're out of work. It's that simple. Why can't the rest of the country, the other 49 states in this goddamn country, get on board with Nevada? Ugh. And anybody who gives me a, well, it's an immoral thing, fuck your morality. It, it, you know, they obviously don't share your morality. Let them do their thing, make it legal, make it safe, make it regulated, and let them let them do their thing. Ah, I I'm, I will never understand people who say that you know like it's immoral. Blah 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 blah. Like you probably watch porn all the time, like literally all the time. You violate the Bible every single day in some way or another. And why stop people from having a good time when it's going to save a lot of people a lot more hassle? Yeah. So, like, for example, when somebody decides that they're not getting sex, so they're going to go shoot up a sorority house. Oh, God, that fucker. So why not give somebody who, for one reason or another, needs it the chance? No, I'm not saying that crazy shithead should have access to any human beings at all. No. Um, but, you know, these are, you know, like, people have needs. It's not just urges at some points. It's actual needs. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, sex is a thing. It's a natural thing. Maybe some people want to, you know, offer money to actually get some sex from somebody that maybe they otherwise may not have a chance with. You know, I mean, I have a friend who, who actually does sometime do prostitution work. And you know what? It, it helps her pay the bills. It helps support her kids. That's why she does it. And unfortunately, she does it in a state where it is not legal. So if she were to be busted, then, you know, she would be going down pretty hard, unfortunately, because, well, well, it's immoral. It's not hurting anybody. If anything, you know, you're providing a good service and having customers leave with a smile on their face. You know, just saying. I mean, as long as there's two consenting parties who are both adults, and as long as everybody is taking the necessary precautions, I really don't see what the problem is. As long as as long as it's not in some sort of you know like pattern of violence, you know, like because there, I mean, prostitution is illegal in some places because it's not safe, because it's not regulated. And if there was regulation involved, then you could make it safe. You could, you know, like prevent women from being extorted and you could prevent people from spreading disease and, and you could prevent people from getting physically hurt. Yeah. Well, physically hurt without their consent, because there are some out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I wanted to, if you want to go to a dungeon, then you go to a dungeon, you know, yeah. um, but you know, it's, it's like, oh, well, this sex wasn't good enough. Beat the girl up kind of stuff, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Oh, so our last story for this week, uh, I think this one is out of, I want to say New York. Yeah. New York City. <laughs> or at least New York, yeah, probably New York City. The Department of Education has fired a substitute teacher who would reportedly turn to her fourth grade students asking for, for uh, dating advice. Cassandra Fearing, Fearing, yeah, was fired selling it for a class of five fourth graders at PS 189 on Ju June 13th. Uh, this was last year. It was an all-day situation, and I was in the room for seven hours without a lesson plan, she said of the school day. The 45-year-old teacher, 45-year-old, asking 9- and 10-year-olds for relationship advice. What the fuck? You're 45. No, you probably, you may or may not have everything together, but... Nine and ten year olds probably have it less put together than you do. Uh, uh, at the time she was dating two men, she although she later noted that it was all theoretical, she sought out her young class's opinions on the two men. She reportedly acted out her scenarios with her students, in which she acted as the boyfriends, and the students took turns pretending to be her. Oh dear. Okay, now this is just getting weird. Yeah, she allegedly hugged one student, tapped another shoulder, and touched two students' thighs. Okay, you know what? I, I was I was okay with the hugging because I'm, I'm I'm hoping the hugging was consensual. Tapping on the shoulder that that's fine. The, you get to the thigh area. That's where you start losing me even more. I mean, you you already lost me by being a 45 year old substitute teacher asking 10 year olds for dating advice when they probably have no idea. That that oh wait th this this bit uh this little bit of my body is supposed to go in her, in her little bit over there really, or it could go in his or it can go in, in in where he yeah, you know they they don't realize this and those that do probably don't give much of a shit. So it's like really, uh, it's like god damn. Uh. Uh, of course, she did say the conversation was G-rated, and they hadn't been talking about sex or anything. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm considering the thigh touching thing. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really. I don't know how much what you would consider G-rating. Uh, just, I mean, just touching the thighs, like you know, touching the thighs might put it up to PG rating right there. Uh, I don't know. Of course, she maintained she did not touch any student inappropriately, and she couldn't remember if she had hugged one of them. She couldn't remember if she hugged one of them. But yet, well, of course, it did say allegedly hugged, so. But but not touch any student inappropriately. Okay, you don't touch a student on the thigh. That's a little too close to, to stranger danger, you know, no-no place. 
a little too close. The bathing suit area. Yeah. A little too close to that. Oh. Oh. And, of course, she has been terminated. And she's even into the relationship with both of the men. So it's like, you, you, okay, I understand you, you have troubles. You, you have your troubles with your mates or what have you, and that's fine. You want to ask for help. That's all well and good. That's, that's what we have the internet for. That's what you have friends for. That's, you know, uh, you know what? If, if, if you're listening and you have that kind of stuff and you want to write in to ask for our advice on something, go for it. Cause we'll, we, I'm sure we'll probably be able to find some way to help you. But you don't ask a group of nine to ten year olds. You just don't do that. Not unless it has something to do with Pokemon or Yu Gi Oh or Beyblades or whatever. You don't need to be asking fourth graders for advice. You really don't. You could be like, hey, fourth graders, how should I build up my Pokemon collection? That's fine. You don't ask. It should, I mean, first off, you shouldn't be bringing any part of your personal life into a classroom. You don't bring your personal life into a workroom, period. In, in, unless your job is to talk to people about your life, like to, to relate to people or something. But, mm-hmm. but no, you don't. You leave your personal life at the doorstep of your workplace because it will affect your work in, in one way or another, and that's bad. Yeah. The only... The only excuse I would see to having like a personal life being brought in is if you have to announce, oh, hey, I'm going to have a baby. That's about the only thing I will excuse at this point. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, like, hey, you need to learn about this. And, and here's an example out of my own personal life. And, and as long as it's, you know, decent, then, yeah, go ahead. Relate something into your personal life. I do it all the time at work when, when people talk about, hey, I – want a cool television will be like hey i just bought this television and it's really awesome and i do this and that on it hey that's one thing related to work but you don't come into some place and just start asking people like telling people about your love life because you know like i worked with a guy i got sent to another store one day and like hey help this guy out and within 20 minutes he was telling me about how badly he wants to divorce his wife and all of his marital problems and i'm like yeah, I just came here to give you a hand not to be your fucking therapist. Jeebus. And you certainly shouldn't be asserting that on children. Oh. Especially children who might not even understand the concept of dating and love lives and 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 stuff like that. Just it's it's above their heads. Yeah, they they're just barely learning what boyfriends and girlfriends are. Maybe just barely or maybe that was just the the kids that I was hanging around with at that age. But they, they don't understand much more beyond that. They don't they understand, okay, I like this girl, we're going to we're going to hang out a lot and, and we'll play tetherball every day together. When I was in fourth grade, I was concerned about are we gonna go to the pool today after school and and um you know, like bop it or or you know, skip it or or Barbies or something. Yeah. Yeah. They're not very well you know, it, it, it's it's not very complicated. Yeah, it was like, okay, I've got Cat's Cradle and Pogs. I'm good. Yes. I go home. I, there, there's Nintendo right there. And the Game Boy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. I, I would be happy. And, and, of course, whatever books I happen to have on hand at the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, re- I read a shit ton when I was in the fourth grade. Yeah. Hell, I read Tim Allen's first book when I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> I read a lot of Fear Street. Like, yeah. I never read Goosebumps. I just skipped straight to Fear Street. Oh, hell, I read the fuck out of Goosebumps. I I remember when Goosebumps was first getting started, which, incidentally, when I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I remember those older books, and I remember reading those older books. I obviously have gotten out of it, but but I remember those older books, and I remember liking them. Of course, I would try and read one now, and I'd probably just tear through it within about an hour. <laughs> uh, but oh well. But as long as long as they're still enjoyable, then then it would be all right. But uh. what we're saying is that that's what fourth graders are concerned about generally. I mean, maybe yes. not these days, but you know. Yeah, even me, and and I'm I'm on record saying that by the time I was in fourth grade, I had seen porn, so I knew about sex and I knew at least what it looked like. 
even I wasn't that concerned about it. I was more concerned about you know the video games and the goosebumps and everything. So you know, even even somebody like me would at, at that point would not have been a good idea to turn to. So what do you think? You know, should I should I date this one guy or should I date this other guy? No, I would I would look at you and be like I don't know. Can I go play Mega Man now? <laughs> be like, what about math class? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Ah, uh, but yeah. So that that is our last news story, and we are coming up on the end of the show. <laughs> oh, it has been been hell of, of time getting to this point, and you know what? I hope you guys were enjoying it. Oh, lordy, that's one hell of a week. I could tell you that much right now. <laughs> Oh, so Kat, if we wanted to find you on social media, where could we find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And you can also find me over on, uh, oh God, what's, what's, what the fuck, what's that, on Jackalope Radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can also find me over on Nerds of the Third Power uh, on thatguywiththeglasses.com under the podcast tab. Sweet. And if you want to find me, you can find me on the social medias, the Twitters, the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you haven't already done so, you can find this show and both of my other podcasts on iTunes. Just look up the name and you should be able to find them. And there was something else. Oh, yes, I do. You know, I still have the Patreon going on. Uh, if you like the shows that I do, if you like the stuff that we do here and you want to toss a couple of bucks to help pay for new equipment, you may have heard it throughout this show. I know it was present in some of my more previous shows that my mic is needing a serious upgrade. I, I know I was hearing some of it in some of my productions, uh, so mic upgrade would help. I'm looking at some good ones, but I need help getting there, and that's where Patreon comes in. Uh, check out patreon.com slash gomer 21 X for that, and it should tell you everything you need to know about what Patreon is and and, and what uh, pledging money will entail and everything. And as a bonus, my lovely girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, also has a Patreon because she does some fabulous artwork. Uh, if you look at some of my more recent stuff, some of the artwork is hers, uh, especially Constructive Deconstruction. That is definitely her. Um, but if you... If you give her enough money, she will do a small 30-second animation for you. By the way, did I mention she is a, an award-winning animator? Because she is, and she is awesome. And you can find her Patreon page over at patreon.com slash beckyhop. So, yeah, go toss money at her because it's good. It's worth it. <laughs> totally worth it. Oh, so with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. Again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with a cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.